Let me ask you something uncomfortable right from the start. Why do you think you struggle to study for long hours? Most people will give excuses like, I get tired, my focus runs out, or my brain just doesn't cooperate. But here's the ugly truth. Your brain is not the problem. Your habits are not the problem. The real problem is the way you've been tricked into believing that long, deep focus is unnatural. You've been told it's impossible, unhealthy, or something that only geniuses can do. And because you've been fed this lie over and over, your brain has built a cage around itself, convincing you that pushing past your limits is torture. But here's where it gets dangerous. That belief system is not only false, it's designed to keep you average. Think about this carefully. If the average student studies three to four hours a day and you study 18, who do you think wins? This isn't about talent. This isn't about IQ. This is about sheer hours of mental exposure to information. Imagine sharpening a sword for three minutes compared to sharpening it for three hours. Which one cuts deeper? The answer is obvious. And if you're already nodding along, your brain is starting to realize a scary but powerful truth. The game of success in academics is rigged in favor of those who can outlast everyone else. Now, let me completely destroy the myth that your brain can't handle 18 hours. The brain is an organ of adaptation. It's built for survival. It doesn't care if you study, hunt, or suffer. It only cares about conserving energy when it thinks something is unnecessary. So when you sit down to study, your brain resists, not because it can't do it, but because it has been conditioned to believe that your phone, food, or entertainment is more urgent. It throws fake signals at you. I'm tired. I'm bored. I need a break. But if you push past that discomfort, something magical happens. Your brain stops complaining. It adapts. It locks into focus. And once it realizes there is no escape, it channels every ounce of energy into the work in front of you. That's why monks can meditate for 10 hours. That's why gamers can play for 16 hours straight. And that's why you can study 18 hours without crying. If you learn how to trick your brain into obeying you instead of sabotaging you. Let me hypnotize you for a second with a harsh but liberating thought. Your brain is your slave, not your master. Right now, you've been letting it boss you around. You listen to its whining, its excuses, its fake signals of fatigue, but high performers flip the script. They dictate what the brain should feel. They force it into a corner until it surrenders. And when it does, studying 18 hours isn't suffering anymore. It becomes normal. Now here's where the manipulation begins, because if you can make your brain believe that 18 hours is your default mode, it won't resist, it won't panic, it won't cry, it will simply comply. That's the secret, not willpower, not motivation, not coffee or energy drinks. The secret is brain conditioning. You trick your mind into thinking that studying all day is not torture, it's survival. And if you're doubting me, let me crush that doubt right now with something you've already experienced. Remember the last time you binged a TV series for hours without realizing it? or scrolled through social media for five hours straight, only to look at the clock and wonder where the time went. Did your brain cry then? Did your eyes demand that you stop? Number, because your brain was tricked into finding it enjoyable. Now imagine applying that same hijacking method to studying. If your brain can handle endless hours of mindless scrolling, it can absolutely handle endless hours of focused learning. The only difference is the perception of pain. And here's the trap. The education system has trained you to associate studying with pain. Every test, every punishment, every moment of forced memorization has wired your brain to believe that studying is suffering. But what if I told you that you can reverse this wiring, that you can turn the exact same circuits that make Netflix addicting into circuits that make textbooks addicting? Once you do that, 18 hours of study won't feel like climbing a mountain, it will feel like flow. So let me be brutally honest with you. If you quit after two hours, three hours, or even six hours, you're not tired, you're tricked, you're falling for your brain's fake signals. But if you push past, 
If you deny those signals, your brain will bend. It will rewire, and one day, without even realizing it, you'll be sitting at your desk at 2 a.m., still studying, without tears, without stress, without begging for a break. You won't even notice the time passing. That's when you'll realize you've won. This video is not about teaching you how to study. It's about teaching you how to dominate your brain so ruthlessly that it has no option but to obey you. And when you master that, when you condition your brain to see 18 hours of studying as natural, you'll become untouchable. While others complain about burnout, you'll be thriving. While others cry about fatigue, you'll be absorbing. While others quit at midnight, you'll still be going. And that's why you'll always end up ahead. Phase 1. Starve your brain of dopamine distractions. Your brain is addicted. It's hooked on fast dopamine. Social media, Netflix, junk food, notifications. These things spike your brain's pleasure centers so high that studying feels like torture in comparison. So the first trick isn't about studying. It's about starving. You need to cut off the junk dopamine that makes studying feel boring. No YouTube scrolling, no Instagram, no random gaming marathons. Here's why this works. Once your brain is deprived of quick hits of pleasure, it lowers its threshold. Suddenly, what once felt boring, reading, writing, solving problems, begins to feel satisfying. You've flipped the balance. You've forced your brain into a state where it needs stimulation. And guess what? Studying becomes that stimulation. It's cruel, it's manipulative, but it's exactly how addiction works. Except this time, you're enslaving your brain to knowledge. You're creating withdrawal symptoms. But instead of reaching for a phone, your brain reaches for a book. That's how you prime yourself for 18 hours of raw focus. Phase two, weaponize micro-commitments against your brain. Your brain is lazy. If you tell it, study 18 hours, it panics, screams, and convinces you to quit. But here's the psychological trick. Don't tell it 18 hours. Tell it five minutes. That's it, just five minutes. Sit down, open the book, and begin. Here's where it gets sneaky. Once you start, the brain realizes it's already invested effort. This is the foot-in-the-door effect in psychology. The hardest part is beginning, and once you've begun, your brain feels trapped. It hates wasting effort, so it continues. Five minutes turns into 30, then into hours. And once you hit momentum, stopping becomes harder than continuing. You are literally hacking your brain's survival instinct. Instead of letting it scare you away from 18 hours, you con it into falling into 18 hours without noticing. This is how soldiers march for days, how athletes train until collapse. They don't think about the marathon. They think about the next step, step by step. Your brain is manipulated into forgetting the bigger number. Phase three, create a brutal, inescapable environment. Here's the truth, willpower is weak. If you keep temptations near you, you will fail. If your environment allows escape, your brain will find it. That's why you must turn your study space into a trap, a cage, a prison where the only activity possible is studying. Remove your phone. Block all distractions digitally. Keep only the material in front of you. Even better, use physical cues to brainwash your mind into associating the space with studying. Same desk, same chair, same lighting, same pen. Over time, the environment itself becomes a switch that forces focus. Your brain doesn't like inconsistency. It builds habits automatically. So if your desk screams, study, then sitting there forces your brain to activate that mode instantly. No excuses, no negotiation. This trick is why monks meditate in monasteries, why athletes train in gyms. The environment enslaves the brain. You're simply using the same weapon. Phase four, train pain into pleasure. Here's the most manipulative part. Studying for 18 hours sounds painful, right? But pain is not the enemy. Pain is a signal, and signals can be rewired. Every time your brain whispers, this is too much, you reframe it. Instead of saying, I'm tired, you say, this is where others quit, but I keep going. Instead of saying, 
my head hurts. You say, my brain is growing stronger. Do this long enough, and your brain learns to associate pain with progress. That discomfort becomes your addiction. You no longer run from the burn, you chase it. And once you start enjoying the strain, you've crossed into a state almost nobody reaches. You've hacked your biology. Think of bodybuilders. They smile while their muscles burn. Think of marathoners. They embrace the ache in their legs. Now apply that to your mind. When the average student collapses, you'll lean in. That's when 18 hours stops being a number and becomes your identity. Phase 5. Reset with ruthless micro-rest cycles. You can't just go endlessly without fuel, but here's the trick. Your rest must be controlled, weaponized, never indulgent. Short breaks, 10 to 15 minutes maximum. No phone, no dopamine hits, no destruction of focus. Just a quick reset. Water, stretch, breathe, maybe stare at the wall, then back in. Why? Because every time you taste pleasure during a break, your brain wants to abandon the study session completely. You've reactivated the craving loop. That's why students fail. They rest incorrectly. They give their brain sugar, dopamine, comfort. You must deny that. Rest like a machine. Just enough to reset. Never enough to crave quitting. This is how professionals, monks, soldiers, and yes, elite students go on for hours without collapse. They don't break their state. They reset inside it. And now the choice is simple. Either you trick your brain or your brain keeps tricking you. Most people will hear 18 hours and laugh, quit, or cry. But a few of you will actually try it, push past the fake pain, and realize you're capable of way more than you thought. Those few are the ones who will leave everyone else in the dust. So tell me in the comments, what's the maximum number of hours you've ever studied without breaking? Be honest, I want to see who's still trapped by their brain and who's already started beating it into submission.